And welcome to my playhouse and today we're in the data center and I'm gonna be um, updating my awesome Lenovo X3650 Model 5. Um, I've been messing around with this in uh, videos. I did see that you didn't think it was great that I got this server to use a GPU in Proxmox. I'm really surprised because that was a really hard video to do and you haven't even watched it yet. But today I'm gonna continue upgrading this server and I put in two CPUs in that server so that I could get riser card number two up and running and that is running now and it is working great it's doing folding at home right now um, just checked it at the computer in the living room made sure that it was still running and it was still running since we put it into production in the last video which is a week ago so it has been running no problems whatsoever but I am um, I kind of picked a couple of bad CPUs for that I picked some really high frequencies, low call count, and um, they aren't exactly doing a great job um, in regards to performance. These CPUs are meant for, well, probably a task that involves a very, very expensive license like Microsoft SQL, SQL, some call it, or Oracle, or other software that is licensed per call. So um, when you have license like that, which is a really shitty way to license your product, it's like everybody with a Mercedes has to pay twice for fuel. But I have two of those in there and they are the Intel Xeon E5 2637V4. And they are quad core, 3.4 gigahertz and they can turbo boost up to um, 3.7 I think. They might actually be 3.5 or 3.6. We'll see that when we get them out of there. I have a couple of other CPUs, uh, which are six cores. They're kind of meant for the same thing. Also core based licensing, but they have six cores and they are quite a bit faster in benchmarks, even though they're a couple of years older than the ones that we are taking out, but they still benchmark quite a bit more. I, um, I looked them up at the computer. Let's go see that. Okay, here they are and I am taking out this CPU and I'm putting in these CPUs. So you can see these are from 2016 and we are putting a couple in from 2014. These are newer, they, have, they are 14 nanometers, these are 22 nanometers and I was wrong about the frequency, they actually do 3.5 gigahertz but other than that it's about the same, used the same amount of power. Uh, there is a bit above the RAM, the new ones I have in there, they can handle 1.5 terabytes, the other ones only half. I uh, will manage, will manage. Uh, frequency of the RAM also goes down a little bit. I think we'll manage. Yeah, benchmark. Here we are. Uh, we can see that one of these E2637 version 4 benchmarks about 6113. And the newer one benchmarks 10,520. So it's quite an improvement and well, well worth it to do that. And to do that, we need to go to Proxmox here. And we also have Proxmox server going there. So we're gonna shut that down. Shutting down. And we're gonna go up to the Proxmox host as soon as this little arrow over here disappears telling us that the virtual machine has been shut down there and we can go and shut down our host shut down yes okay and we might just get it blinking here in a second if I was there it shut down nice I don't really show this much, but I have um, I have like a barricade of uh, of materials here to divide the the cold area, which is out here, with the hot area, which is around the back of the server. So I put in uh, some foam here in the in the little walkway uh, that I have, and I can take that out, and then it will fall together down on the floor. And now I can go around the back and um, and remove the cables on the server. Okay, I can take that out. There. And it stops just short of this. This is it's marvelous. 
marvelous. So, oh dear, can we get this out of here? Maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> don't want to take too much apart if we don't have to. So I just managed to take the air buffler, muffler, buffler, piece of plastic that um, makes sure that the airflow is correct around everything out without removing the graphics card. I don't know if we're going to be able to move the CPU without doing that, but we'll figure out just in a second. Is that long enough? No. We have to take the GPU out. Ah. Maybe we can just give us so slightly. Let's just put it over here. That's fine. Okay. There. Oh yeah, there is a we need to take first this one. That will release the other one. And then you can release them at the same time to release pressure on the CPU equally. So we're gonna take that out and I'm gonna quickly pop in the other one. I don't like these um, pins to be exposed. So the CPU should go in this way. Very carefully. There. There's a little arrow that points down to this corner which also has an arrow and there's a little dot up here and yeah, I don't see the dot but yeah that's the way it should be so let's lock this back in place and we need to do that the right order this one first this one second and that's CPU is in place and let's just grab the other one and I'll need to take out this CPU as well. So first this one, then the other one. There. That is released. We can pop this open. And take the CPU out. And pop the new one in up here as well. There. So that's in there good. Here I'm just cleaning off the um, the heatsink compound, the cooling heating paste. I'm uh, making sure they're okay. A lot of people say that oh, you should use um, isopropyl alcohol, and yeah, that might be right, but it's not gonna matter much. graphics card back in. Uh, there's actually room for another PCI Express right there. Um, not as if it's really needed. I kind of have a lot of good stuff in this server. Connected the server again. It's, uh, it's loading the IMM. Around the back. I have also plugged in all the cables. A bit hard to see because of the lining and not a lot, lot of space back here. But the server only has one power supply. Then I have a 10 gigabit connection in there and a one gigabit. I have two uh, SAS connections for the external SAS box that is just loosely put in there. They're not actually connected. They're just in there so that I don't forget how they, uh, how they, how they should go in there. And then I have the VGA connection down there and the USB and then a red one all the way to the right is for the IMM network. Warm here really fast when all the hot air from behind the servers get out here. So this is a uh, this is a yoga mat that I bought really cheap in in Lidl and these are a couple of foam pieces to get where I got those from. There! 
My door is insulated. So let's have the monitor back on. The IMM is still loading, so let's just power it on. Yeah, we get something on the screen. That says always a good thing. And it is thinking about it. It's initializing the system right now. Okay, it's complaining over here. Got an orange LED. So I just pressed to get into the BIOS. I'm hoping that that might tell us what is going on here. Oh, this is typical. Um, I'm in the system event log. And apparently the event log is full. And it filled that up last year. So... <laughs> Almost exactly. We have the 1st of November when I'm recording this and so it's, it's almost a year ago. I was trying to figure out what is uh, what the problem is or what it's whining about so but now we can clear the event log. And now the system event log only contains that it has been cleared today. Okay, it's just the two CPUs, okay. Uh, but it does not see all the RAM. There should be 256 gigabytes in here, so there is a RAM problem. Oh, dude, I have to shut it down again and remove all the cables and all that good jazz. Oh, dear. So I didn't really touch the RAM when I was in here, so I'm more suspicious of, uh, of the CPU. So what I'm going to try, I'm going to try and swap the two CPUs around and um, and, well, yeah, swap the CPUs around. And then I'm gonna take out all the RAM and put it back in. There are four blocks of 64 gigabytes. Okay. Okay, server is um, powered on. Still no orange lights over here. It can still pop up. Initializing memory, memory initializing. Yeah, oh, I hope we got rid of it. It's only interesting so many times to pull a server out and, and mess with it. It looks promising, no exclamation mark yet. And we just got through the testing and we get a good Lenovo screen here without any, any problems. And it's checking the drives over here, they're all good. So I'm pretty sure it's gonna be booting Proxmox and and we kind of fixed the problem. Yes, Proxbox loaded, no problems. And here at the computer, we now see that we have the two new CPUs and we have 24 cores instead of the 16 that I had before. Quite an improvement as we also saw on the benchmarks that, well, these even though these CPUs are a couple of years older because they have the more cores, well, they will do a lot better. I will start up my GPU Proxmox folding at home cruncher. Okay, and my virtual machine is up and running again and it's crunching numbers on folding at home. Uh, the number is not great right now, it's 220,000. I have seen this double at 440,000, actually 443,000, but never mind that. So, server is back up and running again, faster than ever. Well, yeah, it is about the fastest that it has ever been. I did have that E5 2687V4 in there, but that was only 19,000 points. Now we are over 20, actually about 21,000 points combined. So, yeah, thank you very much for watching my video. Do go check out my little shop and do subscribe to my channel so that you can see me again and have a really nice day. Bye-bye.